Welcome to Commando On Demand. We're spending some time with our families for the holidays, but we do have some great content for you. This is a, one of our favorite Commando On Demand podcasts, and they used to say smoking was not harmful to our health. Today, researchers and doctors are warning us about radio frequency radiation from our devices. We take a look here on the Commando On Demand podcast. From Commando.com, this is Commando On Demand, where we talk to the industry movers and shakers to keep you up to date on everything digital. We'll get started in a moment, but first, we'd like to recognize and thank our partners who help make these Commando On Demand podcasts possible. I have a friend who's super healthy. Maybe you have one of these friends, too. Mary gets up before dawn. She grabs her phone, checks the headlines, and then downloads all her news feeds. Then she jogs five miles every single day rain or shine while streaming all of her favorite tunes. She's constantly online researching healthy foods and recipes. She's one of these moms who won't even let her kids touch sugar. She works from home, Bluetooth in her ear, tablet in one hand, a new beautiful baby boy in the other. And while the baby naps, she meditates with a relax app, but she always keeps an eye on the baby monitor. Every night, she helps her older son do his homework, huddled together around a nice warm laptop. And then at bedtime, she falls fast asleep, again using her Relax app. She's grateful that with one click, she can watch her brand new baby boy just sleeping peacefully in the other room. She works hard at being a good mom, or so she thinks. Because what my friend Mary doesn't know is that as hard as she tries to keep her family healthy, She very may well be, in certain ways, putting them at risk for autism, developmental problems, even cancer. I've told her about this, and I'm going to tell you why, coming up next. I'm Kim Commando, host of America's largest show about everything digital. And every week, we put together these special Commando On Demand podcasts. It gives us a chance to delve deeper into particular topics that I just can't do in a three-hour call-in weekend radio show. Which, speaking of the show, I've noticed in my email some people are confusing this podcast with the actual weekend show. This is not my weekend radio show. This is called the Commando On Demand podcast. If you'd like to get the weekend show as a podcast, head over to GetKim.com. That's GetKim.com. All right. As most of you know, I'm a huge fan of technology. I always have been. But I'm a bigger fan of knowledge because when you think about knowledge, knowledge gives you tremendous power. When I see a danger in technology, I always have to warn you guys and gals about it. That's why I'm always posting things on my website about the latest scams, viruses, data breaches, security risks, you name it. It's all important and it goes hand in hand with being a smart consumer nowadays. A long time ago, when my son was still a baby, I did a radio show about the potential dangers of prolonged exposure to the RF frequencies in wireless communications. Some of you may remember it. I said then that I didn't want my child to be exposed to this stuff. And this is long before any real warnings came out. But scientists, physicians, and researchers have been on their soapbox about this for years. Have we listened? Have we done anything about it? No, even with its increasing link to breast and brain cancer, and its associations with infertility and genetic mutations related to autism and ADHD, it seems like we're still ignoring this invisible threat and we go on like nothing's happening. And I'll tell you right here at the get-go, there are a lot of people who will disagree with what I just said. Take, for example, Peter Sullivan. He ignored the threat. And why shouldn't he? He's a super successful software designer for companies like Excite, Netflix, Silicon Graphics. He hasn't made. At one time, if anyone even mentioned electromagnetic field sensitivity, he wrote them off as crazy, hypochondriacs, nuts. But when his two young sons began to show signs of being on the autism spectrum, Peter, he wanted to find out why. And like any good father, he began to dig for the answers. And he was shocked at what he found that he set out to warn as many people as possible. He joined forces with the award-winning film director, Sabim Aljamayo, mother of three, who was also deeply concerned about the radio frequency radiation. After interviewing doctors, health researchers, public health policy experts, they created a film. They called it Generation Zapped. 
Zapped means affected by electromagnetic and RF frequencies that come from the wireless routing devices. If you think about it, most of us are being zapped one way or another. But Generation Zapped is not one of those conspiracy theory movies about all the invisible waves. It's actually a well-balanced, important documentary about the health risks and problems caused by RF frequencies. So don't write this quite off yet, folks. I want you to listen up. Because if you have unexplained symptoms, maybe headaches, hot sensations, nausea, you may actually have EMF sensitivity. How much more such radiation does penetrate your body today compared to like 10 years ago? Is it twice as much? Three times as much? No, it's a quintillion times more. That's a one with 18 zeros. That unbelievable soundbite is from Dr. Ole Johansson, and that's just one of the many eye-opening quotes from the documentary Generation Zapped. I'm going to play more, I promise. But right now, though, we have a quick message from our sponsors who help make this podcast possible. Want to make sure that nothing comes between you and protecting your family this holiday and save hundreds of dollars while you're at it? You need Simply Safe home security. If a storm takes out your power, Simply Safe is ready. If an intruder cuts your phone line, Simply Safe is ready. Here's what I love about this. Maybe it's overkill. Maybe it's the last thing you want to think about this holiday. But with Simply Safe, you're always ready for anything. They believe nothing should get in the way between you and protecting your family. That's why Simply Safe doesn't cost an arm and a leg. They charge you what's fair, what's right. $14.99 a month. I recommend Simply Safe to everyone I know. And today, you can save hundreds of dollars on that protection if you go to simplysafekim.com. That's simplysafekim.com. Make sure to use that URL so they know that I sent you. But hurry, this holiday offers ending soon. You can save hundreds of dollars right now. Go to simplysafekim.com. That's simplysafekim.com. I'm really excited because I have the film's director from the documentary Generation Zapped, Sabim Aljamaya, on the line. Sabim, welcome to our podcast. We call them Commando on Demand. Thank you, Kim, for having me on your show. First of all, what is electromagnetic sensitivity? And secondly, how would I even know if I have it? It is people who are sensitive to radio frequencies or electromagnetic fields, and their symptoms are often like headaches or nausea, um, sometimes nosebleed. Some people actually can feel a text from across the room if someone if someone's holding a cell phone. And so I think when some people see the film, they go, oh, I get headaches. Oh, and I don't sleep very well. It may be because... I don't know, the router's in my bedroom. What made you so interested in this? I mean, I have to tell you, this is a really controversial topic that you were willing to make an entire film about it. Um, There are certain people that I won't even go near this topic because all it does is just spring up this massive debate. At the time when I started being interested in the issue that was four years ago, I started the film, I had a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, and an 8-year-old. And I was like, well, they're starting to grow up in that wireless age. What's going to happen to them? And I think that, that w- that's what triggered my me to make this film. When you began to interview people about EMF sensitivity, what to you is the most shocking? I think the thing that shocked me most is how come we didn't know about this and how come the wireless devices are so available on the market without any warnings. I think that was my biggest thing because when you walk, at least I live in California, and when you walk in some buildings, you often have a disclaimer or a warning sign saying you're about to enter a building that is known to have carcinogenic things. There's this warning. It's interesting that wireless devices don't have that, or if they do, we just don't look at them because they're so much part of our lives that we don't even question their health impact. Or the impact on our kids. Have you met any children who really have shown definite EMF issues? There's only one story. I did a talk two years in a row in our school to ninth graders and 10th graders. And one kid came up to me and said, you know, my hip is hurting all the time and we don't know why. We went to see so many doctors and 
I carry my cell phone in that pocket. My answer to him was like, why don't you try taking out your cell phone from your pocket for at least a month and see if your hip gets better? But it was interesting that he made the correlation and came to see me after the talk. My children are not electrosensitive per se. Now, I believe that everyone is sensitive to some extent because radio frequencies and electromagnetic fields do affect everyone on the cellular level, but some people have symptoms from it and others don't. The question is, over time, will they? And over time, is that going to really affect it? the people who don't feel it? Are they going to have health issues? Okay, I just have to ask you, do you let your kids have cell phones? Because I don't think I could pry the smartphone out of my son's hands. Uh, only my 16-year-old now has a cell phone. The other two still don't have. That's kind of my the age where, where I agreed to give a cell phone for safety reasons. But once they're at school, I'll tell you, all bets are off. Most kids do carry around a smartphone. There is a cumulative effect. See, if you have 30 kids in a classroom who all have their cell phones on vibrate or silent mode rather than off or on airplane mode, where you have 30 devices emitting radiations when they're not, they can't even answer it. So why expose them to that kind of radiation? They have enough radiation from the Wi-Fi in school not to add their own radiation and their friends' radiation in their cumulative backpacks in a, um, in a classroom. Another thing I tell my children, for instance, is, well, if you don't have to connect to the Internet at school on the, on the Chromebook that they're providing you, then turn it off. You've talked with so many impressive experts who have been saying this for years. Turn it off, use a landline, don't sleep next to anything that acts like a router. But of all the things that you have learned, what would you say was the one thing that made you stop in your tracks and think, whoa, I really got to explore this one? You know, I had never thought about breast cancer related to cell phones. When I hold my cell phone to my ear, I do have a shooting pain, so I never do anymore. But I think that was the most shocking thing to me, is the rise in breast cancer in young women and how more and more they're discovering that some are actually cell phone related. And now through Generation Zap, you're telling everyone the inside scoop. I imagine that it's hard not to get angry about it. I tend to be a uh, positive person, like living in anger. I don't, I don't find it constructive to live in anger all the time. So, yes, I do feel angry, but I also take responsibility for being a consumer. And I think that there would be no industry if there was no consumer. So that's the approach that I take in the film is that we're, if we want the industry to change, not only we need to raise awareness with Generation Zap, the movie for instance, but also we need to use technology differently. I do get angry, but I feel that if I was only angry, I wouldn't have a tool or it wouldn't empower me to make a difference, an immediate difference for my kid. Something that I've been saying since I started my show, say, I don't know, back in 1995, we control the danger of technology when and only when we take responsibility for learning how to use it. Because these days, it's impossible not to use wireless technology, especially if you're in business or even if you're in schools. I don't think you can actually go back. We can't go back. Technology is not going back. Everything is becoming wireless. Every company has an app. And like you say, in a way, if you want to be part of society, you kind of have to give in because otherwise you feel alienated. I am a user of the technology, but I put guidelines around it. For instance, in business, I use iMessaging system, WhatsApp, Skype, Facebook, off of my hardwired computer. There's no reason why I have to have it on my phone all the time. Two-thirds of my day, if not all my days, work-wise, is on, on my hardwired computer. And that's already huge. I'm already significantly reducing my exports just by doing that. I saw the pre-release, and there is so much information from over a dozen experts. This is definitely something the Commando fans are going to want to see. When is it going to be released to the public? So 
we've already released it. We have a screening campaign actually going on right now where people can host a home screening up to 15 people or host a bigger community screening. And that gives them the licensing rights to show the film and sell tickets to pay for the screening. And you can find the information on our website at generationzap.com under host the screening. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. I'm sorry. I didn't know that anyone can actually sell tickets and have a movie screening. That's really cool stuff. Absolutely. And the reason we're releasing it that way for the moment before releasing VOD or DVD is because we really want people to see it as a community. It is kind of uh, one of those films. <laughs> Not to say that it's scary because it's a very well-balanced film, but you want to see it with people. You want to be able to have a conversation or about what people are doing in their own community or sometimes when some people become aware of the issue and they realize that they are electrosensitive. And that the kind of awareness that the movie is creating uh, amongst people and people immediately start applying some tips that we offer. We have weekly tips of how to reduce your exposure. Bringing neighbors, families and communities together is a really great way to get things done. In fact, sometimes it's the only way to get things done. Sabine, thank you so much for taking the time to call in and spend some time with me today. Thank you for having me on your show, Kim. One woman's story about her husband touched me more than the rest. It's pretty scary stuff, I'm going to warn you. But I want you to hear it. So here's a clip from the film. He had a grand mal seizure in the middle of the night. And within an hour, they had done a CT scan and they said he had a large mass in his right frontal lobe. He had to wait, though, about two weeks for surgery. And what was really remarkable was that our son had worked for Senator Ted Kennedy. So my son came in and he said, Mom, I have to talk to you about something that's really bothering me. They think it was his cell phone. And I I was just stunned because my husband was a heavy user of a cell phone. He always held it to his right ear and his tumor grew. It was his right frontal lobe. I remember that night I sat up all night long searching the Internet and I found all this information that I had no idea existed. And there, was, there were studies about it, and there were scientists in Sweden, and there were other people who were talking about how cell phones were causing brain tumors. So maybe you remember that Ted Kennedy died. They said of a brain tumor, so many experts say, was caused by his cell phone. Joe Biden's son, the same thing. In the past 15 years, 23 political figures have died from brain tumors. Prior to 1995, it was only 15. In a recent study by the International Journal of Oncology, doctors found that people who use cell phones for more than a year had a 70% greater risk of brain cancer than those who use them for a year or less. They also found that people who use mobile phones for more than 25 years had a 300% greater risk than brand new users. The study's authors came to the conclusion that certain brain tumors are indeed caused by RF and EMF emissions from wireless phones. Every single one of the world's largest studies have all pointed towards the same thing, a common risk to increase brain cancer through wireless phone emissions. Several years ago, a friend of mine, who actually happens to be a brain surgeon, saw me talking on my phone held up to my right ear. When I put the phone back in my purse, he came over and said to me, never do that again. And I looked at him like, what were you talking about? He said, never put the phone up to your head again. As a brain surgeon, we are seeing increased tumors on the right sides of people's heads. And afterwards, I'll tell you, I never put the phone up to my head again, and I told all my family members to do the same. And I also shared this story on my national radio show. Despite what critics say, cell phone companies are not completely silent about this. Have you ever actually read the warnings in your phone's manual? Most of them say, in plain English and 50,000 other languages, not to hold a cell phone right next to your ear. Let's listen to another clip from Generation Zapped about how this distance was tested. The standard was based on microwave oven studies from the 70s and 80s. It was really not relevant to anything other than heating effects. When they did some safety testing and they built a model that they called SAM, standing for Standard Anthropomorphic Mannequin, But bizarrely, what they did was Sam was based on the 90th centile of military recruits. 
So he wasn't representative of a child or even a woman or actually an average man. This guy, just his head weighed five kilograms, which is more than some children's entire body. The advice in the phone tells you to keep it off the body because phones are tested in two positions. They are tested next to the head and next to the body. When they're tested next to the head, they're tested with a spacer. It used to be 10 millimeters away from the head. Now I think it's six. But the point is, there's a space between the phone and the head. The industry has succeeded in getting the FCC to accept an approach where the phone is not used like this. And you know that this is exactly how most people use phones. In the movie, Dr. Deborah Lee Davis is pressing a cell phone to her ear. Most of us do that. Just admit it. So here's that free piece of advice again. Stop pressing the phone next to your brain. It's a very good first step. Now on to step two. Do you remember these? You know, if you were to follow a busy doctor as he makes his daily round of calls, you'd find yourself having a mighty busy time keeping up with him. Time out for many men of medicine usually means just long enough to enjoy a cigarette. In a repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Chesterfield is the only cigarette in the country which gives you one, proof of highest quality, two, proof of no adverse effects to the nose, throat, and sinuses. This proof comes from the latest report just received covering a full 16 months. And it comes from a doctor who's been examining a group of Chesterfield smokers as part of a program supervised by a responsible, independent research laboratory. Yeah, you heard right. Back in the day, experts were claiming that smoking was one of the best things you could do for your body. And people actually believed it. Of course, we now know otherwise. But are we any smarter? Not really. Because despite all the warnings and deaths, people still smoke. Why? Some people really do enjoy it. But others are just plain addicted. So I got to thinking, maybe we're addicted to our phones. Do you ever catch yourself being so-called glued to your cell phone, constantly picking it up and putting it back down for no reason? It becomes like a nervous twitch. Anyway, I wanted to focus on the addictive aspect of cell phone use because stopping the addiction is actually step two. So I called Dr. Ryan Montoya a top-rated family physician who specializes in opioid addictions. Coming up next. And before we get to all that, just stay right where you are because I have to extend a special thank you to our partners in this podcast. They help make it possible. Dr. Montoya, welcome. Thanks for having me, Kim. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Ryan, what I like about your background is that you were a technology analyst before you became a doctor. Have you found a correlation between opioid narcotics addiction and the addiction to technology? Maybe correlation is a strong word, uh, definitely some sort of connection between the two. So as you know, my focus of practice is in patients with opiate addiction, but there is unfortunately a similarity between that addiction and the type of addiction of cell phone use. Both activities release this neurotransmitter called dopamine, which we're all familiar with, into the brain. And this dopamine acts on a specific area of the brain called the ventral tegmental area, or the VTA. Uh, most people know this as the reward center of the brain. So there have been all kinds of studies on the VTA. It's very uh, well documented that this area lights up during activities like heroin use, cocaine use, eating chocolate, and to a smaller but more frequent degree, even the moments when you receive text messages or emails on your phone, this same VTA area lights up. And so this kind of smaller, more frequent metered release of dopamine makes for a sneakier type of addiction in uh, cell phone use and is kind of causing the whole medical community to, re to re-examine the way we interact with technology in what we consider a healthy way. So what are some of the symptoms that you've seen? So this is by no means a comprehensive list, but some of the things that I've seen in my practice personally can kind of indicate cell phone use addiction. So one of the most obvious symptoms of cell phone addiction is when a patient, you know, has their phone out or uh, has it in their hand during an office visit or even worse, unfortunately, people using the phone during an office visit. So I actually had this uh, one visit where I realized halfway through a full physical examination that my patient was attempting to Snapchat the event secretly. Um, oh. No way. You know, I always figured that people wanted utmost privacy when it came to their health, but I guess not in every case. Um, I'm not exactly sure who's watching that. Um, 
Another symptom you see is checking behaviors. This happens in people with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder uh, and other psychiatric conditions. It, it kind of reinforces addiction uh, for the people who are cell phone users. So anyone who's constantly refreshing their Facebook feed or Instagram feeds or their emails or checking for new texts. Each of these events is a version of a hit. And what this does is it creates a supplemental reality where the brain is always stimulated. But it can lead to withdrawal when that constant stimulation is taken away. So during silence or waiting periods, the brain is inherently more creative or able to solve problems more easily but in a cell phone addicted brain, that brain is constantly relying on stimulation from technology to prevent withdrawals. There are actually some interesting studies showing that people's cognitive ability and problem solving decrease just by physically having their phone in the room, even if it's turned off because they're obsessing over their phone. Okay, I know a lot of people like that. But when you say it gets serious, like, should we be concerned about it? One of the most concerning symptoms I've seen is intertwined with suicidality in younger patients. So I've actually seen this most often in adolescent or teenage patients who are withdrawn or having symptoms of depression. These feelings of loneliness are kind of amplified by this perfectly manicured pseudo-reality where um, they look at other people posting online and they feel that those people's lives are that much farther away from their version of happiness and it lends to bullying online as well. So there's definitely an association between increased cell phone use in depressed individuals and increased suicidal thoughts or actually attempted suicide. And it's sad because the patients had a really vulnerable time psychologically and you know uh, he or she is not yet equipped to understand the fallacy of the social media post. I know that feeling. It's a terrible feeling. It's so easy to fall into that they've got it better than me or they've got more likes than me trap. No judgment in any of these symptoms or any of these descriptions because I myself am guilty to, uh, of a lot of these behaviors and that's what's really kind of shocking is there's no sense of what the normal amount of activity is. Just to give you uh, an idea, the average person is checking their phone about 2,600 times a day. That's amazing. We can't just go on blindly thinking that this isn't going to affect us, physically or otherwise. And I've been warning people about this for years on my show, back when my son was a toddler. So what can someone do if they suspect that their child has a serious cell phone, internet, or even a gaming addiction? For people who uh, there's a concern of cell phone addiction, my first concern is mental health and suicidality. Um, so if you or someone you know, you suspect them of, of self-harm or self-injury, definitely contact emergency medical services. And the first person you want to be in contact with is some kind of mental health professional, whether primary care doctors, psychologists or psychiatrists. They are becoming better trained at this. I know that we haven't been as good as we should be. But for pure serious is technology addictions. There are three very well-known centers that specifically deal with this, whether it's cell phone technology addiction, video game addiction, or just computer addiction. One is called the Center for Internet Addiction. That's in uh, Bradford, Pennsylvania. Another is the Center for Internet and Technology Addiction in West Hartford, Connecticut. And then there's Restart Internet Addiction Recovery Program, and that's in Fall City, Washington. Now, these are three very well-known centers, but more and more are popping up, hopefully uh, closer to wherever these people are. And they have kind of more comprehensive programs of cognitive behavioral therapy, but they really get at the problem by helping address things like the environment in which the addiction to cell phone use or opioid use in conjunction with cell phone use. Do you mind if we tell people how they can reach you in case they need help? Sure. If they feel like it's something they want to talk about and they need to be redirected to any resources, they can feel free to email me at my work email, which is rjmontoyaconsultants at gmail.com. Dr. Montoya, I can't tell you how grateful I am to have you as a guest on the show. I know there are people listening who really needed to hear what you had to say. And folks, if there's somebody in your family or friend circle, you should share this information with them too. Well, thank you very much for having me, and uh, it was a pleasure being on the show. So let's recap. Step one, stop pressing the cell phone next to your ear. Go somewhere where you can put on speaker mode or use wired headphones. Step two, stop the addiction. Cut down on your wireless use. Use it only when you have to. Otherwise, figure out a way to go wired. Just like when you take the extra time to shop gluten-free or exercise every day, 
you can find a way to make this a priority in your life. And finally, step three, protect the kids. It really should be step one. I remember warning you about this years ago. You don't have to be an expert to figure it all out. The stuff emitted by wireless technology is more than likely harmful to kids because they're growing, and especially to fetuses and infants. The fetus is programming itself, which means that every cell of the fetus is getting information from outside, from the environment, from the mother. All these can make a sort of mismatch in his programming. Of all the stages of life, the fetus is by far the most vulnerable. And that's for multiple reasons. First of all, the fetus is growing cells rapidly. So cells are dividing rapidly. So if there is an exposure, that can influence the fetus and can alter the whole lifespan of the subsequent child. The exposures from the time you're conceived, the things that you get once you're a baby, the baby monitors that your parents, in all good intention, put next to your head, which is like living next to a cell tower. There's more from Generation Zapped. If you're a new mom, it's not meant to scare you, but to inform you. And it's worse in schools. Do you know how much frequency radiation your kids are actually being exposed to? An analogy of a classroom being the inside of a microwave oven set at very low power. Children are exposed to that Wi-Fi radiation six hours every school day, five days a week, and for several months during the year, 13 years of school. It's a very disturbing trend that we're setting up by irradiating some of the youngest and most vulnerable people in our population. Most parents are oblivious to this whole issue. They think Wi-Fi in schools is the greatest thing since sliced bread because they have no understanding of the concern. In France, they had some of the first adopters of Wi-Fi. Now they're recognizing that the Wi-Fi is potentially harmful to school children, so they're getting rid of it in elementary schools. It's particularly tragic because a wired computer classroom will not expose your child to radio frequency radiation. Again, I didn't mean to scare you with this podcast. I really want you to believe that knowledge is power. You may want to have a meeting with your local school's IT person, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Jamie is a photographer with extreme EMF hypersensitivity. A text from across the room will literally send him reeling into a migraine. Because of my sensitivities, we want to address it at the boys' school because they, you know, all the schools are wireless. Every school is wireless. So we ask them, at least if they're going to be in that all day, can we at least take out one of the factors and not have their laptops be wireless? So by doing that, we are able to convince them to hardline their computers. Do you use a lot of wireless? Do you live near a transmission tower? Do you work in a building that has Wi-Fi, strong Wi-Fi? Do you carry your cell phone in your pocket or maybe in your bra? Well, you might want to think about all this. If you have headaches, trouble sleeping, mental troubles, unexplained tumors, sickness, you may have electromagnetic sensitivity. If your kids have developed symptoms of autism or complain about headaches, at least consider doing the research and reading about it. Generation Zapped is an hour and a half long, and it's just chock full of information, much more than I could ever cover in this one podcast. But I'm going to leave you with a couple of gems from the movie. The first one's really cool. I don't think a lot of people know about this one. The worst time to put a phone right next to the head is when you say hello, because it's programmed to go to max power. hundred times a minute, it says, where are you? Here I am. Where are you? Here I am. We can change that. You can have it go as the Android system does into a deep sleep so that it doesn't always ping you back and forth. You can do a blood test. You can do a urine test. You can measure malondialdehyde lipid peroxidation. You can see what's going on with those cells. And that is a biological measure that says the person is impaired. Be aware of the number of sources of wireless that sneak into everyday life. As you layer up, your dose actually is larger and larger as we're at the same time deciding we have to have lower and low exposures to protect our health, our sleep, and the next generations. Now, of course, it makes sense. Electromagnetic frequencies are increasing. If barometric pressures, humidity, the tide, the moon phases can affect you, so can EMF. After all, some animals use magnetic fields to navigate. Foxes seem to use radio frequencies to hunt for prey. And check this out. You can use radio frequencies for your benefit, too. 
There's another podcast you should listen to. It's all about a town in West Virginia where people live because there are no electromagnetic frequencies. There's no Wi-Fi. There's no routers. Hardly any cell towers. The podcast that you want to listen to is called The Town Without Cell Phones. And that'll be coming out next week. You're really going to like it. And remember, when you visit my website, subscribe to these podcasts, read my blogs and articles, you're really arming yourself with the very latest information about technology. And the world is growing so fast, exponentially, it can be hard to keep up. It can get away from you. And before you know it, you have no idea how to navigate. Well, every day, my team, we publish up-to-the-minute content, content that you can trust. So the hunt is over. My website is your source for all things digital. Visit me at commando.com and be sure to subscribe to my newsletters. You'll find the button right there at the top at komando.com. Hey, and I want to thank my guests for this podcast, Generation Zap Director Sabim al Dr. Ryan Montoya, and Executive Producer Peter Sullivan for their extremely valuable input. Maybe together we can zap some awareness into the tech industry and really bring some knowledge about EMF sensitivity to the general public. And a big thank you to Vicki Morgan, who helped us put this podcast together. I love it that she's so smart. And Mike James, our technical director, he mixes it all together so it sounds fantastic.